If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at ShireSociety.com. All right, so we're going to call the meeting to order. Uh, first time in business before we get on to the applications, uh, the board has received a member of the, the package of the minutes from last meeting, mm -hmm. so I'll take a motion for that. I move that we accept the minutes as presented. Okay. I second. Second. Any corrections? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so I'd like to welcome those in the audience to the June 29th Board of Assessors meeting. The board consists of three public members and myself. I am the chairman of the board. I'm also the city assessor, so I'm a non-voting member of this board. The uh, main purpose of today's meeting is to review three applications in which the applicants are requesting being exempt from taxation. <clears throat> the board has received a copy of all the information submitted with the applications prior to today's meeting, and I've had the opportunity to review the information independently prior to today's meeting. Uh, applicants will be given an opportunity to address the board only concerning matters before the board today. We ask that comments highlight pertinent information only. There's no need to go through the information that's already been submitted. The board's decision is final, and written notice of the decision will be mailed to the property owner. If taxpayers dis dissatisfied with the board's decision, an appeal can be filed with either the Board of Tax and Land Appeals or the Superior Court, uh, but not to both. So with that, uh, the first application is the Shire Free Church, Monadnock. I understand there's two applicants that wish to speak. Rich Paul, first. So please state your name and your address. Mm, okay. My name is Rich Paul. I'm the friar of the Church of the Invisible Hand, which is a sub-organization of the Shire Free Church. I operate the uh, Society for Love and Peace, or I'm sorry, Sanctuary for Love and Peace, which is located at 75 Leverett Street. Um, at that location, I offer spiritual counseling, I introduce people to the scriptures of our church and I help them understand them uh, as they read them, or if they happen to be audio and video, as some of them are, I, can, I watch them with them and help them understand them. I've counseled people who are suicidal, I've counseled drug addicts. Um, I have a great deal of experience doing this before I became a minister. I counseled uh, drug addicts for 22 years as a member of Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous. Um, so that and we also have uh, charitable, pro charitable programs at the church. But rather than finding ways to give people fish, we find ways to teach them to fish. So far we have helped set up one uh, trash hauling business and we've helped set up a lawn mowing business, and that's a continuing thing, finding people a way to live in a market that y'all have regulated so much that if you don't have, uh, if you're not in the good graces of the government, you can't survive. If you're a felon, you can't get a job because y'all have crushed the market. You've crushed the demand for labor. Just, just you know, the board here is just hearing your application. We're not. We don't write legislation, we're not... It's, it's true. What I'm trying to ex explain, and I guess I'll start at the beginning of it, is that to ask my church to pay taxes is to ask us to support violence, to support evil, to support being, people being kidnapped who have harmed no one for possession of a sacrament, marijuana. You are, it's like asking Jews to pay for prison camps, okay? And we will have none of it. Um, the only reason that I've supported paying taxes up to this point is because our building would be of more benefit to you than our money would be. So asking us to pay for the visible boot of government, the antithesis, the antithesis of the invisible hand, is an insult and it should not happen. And I guess last of all, if any of you feel that you want to leave your lives of violence and sin, please come down to the church and talk to me because there are ways to get what you want without forcing other people to give it to you at gunpoint. Any questions? Any questions for Rich? Thank you. Thank you. Mark Edgington. Thanks. Again, this is your name and address, please. Yeah, it's Mark Edgington. Uh, my mailing address is uh, seven, excuse me, it's uh, uh, 63 Emerald Street, number 506. Where do you reside? Out in Westmoreland, New Hampshire. Thank you. Um, Mary, Mary, Josh, welcome. You have uh, not been able to sit through one of these yet. So, uh, welcome. Thank you. 
Um, up to this point, this I think is our third or fourth of these, and uh, we haven't been able to agree that um, Shire Free Church is a real church. And I'd like to go over some points that I think would uh, would make that more clear. Um, so whether or not uh, you know. Uh, we are just a group of societal reprobates who wish to avoid paying our sh fair share would be the other side of that story. Um, and I want to uh, disabuse people of that notion. So I've gone over the issue of uh, what is a fair share. Uh, ad nauseum, you don't need to hear it again. We're not going to agree. Um, you've got the power. We don't. We can't change that. So what I'd like to go over is whether or not it's a real church and if it's worthy of the tax status that is enjoyed by other churches in Keene, New Hampshire, in the Monadnock region, Cheshire County, um, New Hampshire, the state, and uh, across the nation. This is uh, dispensation from taxes. It's nothing unusual for churches, and um, Shire Free Church isn't distinguishable legally from any of these organizations. I'm going to go through some of these points. I've asked for questions in the past, and eh, I don't feel like I've gotten, um, you know, I don't feel like I've gotten the, the feel of the board as to why they're choosing not to grant uh, the Shire Free Church, its dispensation. So, are we a group of people that share a unifying and deeply held belief structure and practice that belief structure? I don't think there's anybody in the city of Keene that would disagree with that statement. We are clearly that. Do we believe in a God or gods? I do. Ian? Yeah. Sure. yeah? Okay. Um, do we think that, that those God or gods have given us a mandate? to spread some tenant of their moral code and deliver their message. I do. I believe that thoroughly. That in and of itself is a religion, a denomination, or a sect as laid out in the New Hampshire statutes and United States code. But I understand that people may have other concerns. So, um, have we abided by the law uh, as it is laid out by the state of New Hampshire? We are a a religious nonprofit, which is the same paperwork that every other uh, church in the city of Keene has filled out. We are in compliance with all federal code, all IRS code. There is no legal distinction between the Shire Free Church and any other church in the city of Keene. If you can come up with a distinction, by all means, I want to hear it so that we can address those issues. Thank you. Um, we have been recognized by the court. Judge Burke has given not uh, uh, community service hours to people for the Shire Free Church. We have married. We have buried. We have visited those in jails. We have bank accounts and power bills. We're completely legal. So what about the elephant in the room? The reason the towns give tax dispensation to churches is because the community members can attend. Is that the elephant in the room? Well, it's not true. It's a narrative. The fact that religion and state have come to an equilibrium over time does not mean that the state gives any powers. Property taxes come from quit rents, which were paid to nobles that claimed to own the land upon which serfs dwelt. The nobles knew that the serfs would kill them if they messed with their religion. Now, we're a lot less of a religious of a society today, and I think for the better, but otherwise, Many of the names, um, the names have only changed as far as the power structures go. The narrative is the state allows the people to be uh, dispensated from taxes. The reality is, is that if it had tried to tax the church in the beginning, it would not have existed long enough to tax anyone. Nonetheless, where's our building with a pointy roof? Well, if we bought one, my guess is that you'd be like, well, it's just a bunch of bums in a building with a pointy roof. They're not religious enough. I don't know. I've looked at pointy building pointy roofs, but I don't think that it'll make a big difference. The reality is that new denominations, especially if they grow organically instead of coming out of uh, through a, a schism at a church, um, they're generally treated poorly by the powers that be. Think about Protestants. They had a terrible time throughout Europe and England getting recognition for their religions. It took many, many decades for that to happen. That's why America exists. That's why New Hampshire exists. That's why Keene exists. People who had a religious belief wishing to separate themselves because they couldn't get, they couldn't get recognition in the communities they were in. 
Now, lots of churches in town don't own their building. Some even meet outside from time to time. Are they any less of a church? My ministry is that of a moral teacher, three nights a week on the radio. Daryl, the same. Ian, six nights a week. Anyone in Keene could get Free Talk Live seven nights a week on any radio before the FCC shut down one of several attempts by people in Keene independently to air our morality-based show. They could listen one night a week before they were we were taken off the air by w uh, WKDK for libelous and slanderous lies. Lies the city of Keene doesn't seem to care about at all. Um, they're, when they're plastered uh, all around downtown, excuse me. Frankly, it's very similar to how sex, like the diggers, the levelers, and the Quakers were treated in the 17th century England. The parallels are shocking. Any keener can hear us preach seven nights a week on the internet, and I dare say, I'd be willing to make a bet, a small wager, that we have a larger congregation in the Monadnock area than many, if not most, churches. There are many preachers that broadcast their message. The Congregationalists do it at the head of, I'm not even pointing wrong, at the head of the square. Many preachers whose churches are just on the airwaves. Are they any less of a preacher because they don't have a dozen people sitting in pews right in front of them? So I've tried to address every issue I can think of regarding our legal status as a church. And before you vote no, and none of us here are any doubt that you will, I believe you've got an obligation to asking me questions and showing me how the Shire Free Church is not a church. Not to simply vote me down, but to explain to me what the distinction is between my organization and any one of them that currently enjoys tax dispensation. This isn't about public opinion. This isn't about a gut feeling. It's the law. And the law is clear. I didn't write it. I've just followed it. We're a church. Now, 73 and 75 Leverett isn't just a church. It's a parish house. There's no real definition of what a parish house is in the statutes. We do lots of things there. It's a, it's a parsonage in which ministers sleep. It's a lodging. Um, you know, it's, uh, we, we do teaching there. It's our pulpit from which we broadcast our message. So there are lots of different uses. We are not asking for total dispensation of the tax burden, as it were. It, we are currently asking for what amounts to about 75% off of the taxes, and we will actually pay more than what we would be legally obligated for. We have, in the past, as you know, um, cut checks for the amount that doesn't include schools. It's the schools that is a moral sticking point for us, we don't believe that we should be obligated to pay for what amounts to the worst school in a given geographic area for a given age. We think that the marketplace is the best organization for uh, figuring out uh, who should get the money from people and that sort of thing. We have supported the Waldorf School and um, the 100 Knights and a variety of other organizations. So we do give our money to the community. We would prefer, we want, we beseech that we not be forced to give it through the organization known as the City of Keene. That's a wrap. Any questions for Mr. If you're going to vote no, I want you to know, I want to ask why, and you're going to vote no. <laughs> the, the burden of proof is on the applicant, not on the board to, to prove. Sure, is, and the applicant has presented a great deal of evidence. Right. If the board is convinced, they can vote no. If not, they vote no. It's, that's up to the board to decide that. But the burden is on you to prove your case. Excellent. Um, then I will ask my question a little differently. If you choose to retain, or, um, that you believe that every other church that has the dispensation in this town deserves it, then I'd ask you why you think that the Shire Free Church doesn't. We're here today to vote on your application. Sure. You're not going to answer questions? I mean, isn't there supposed to be questions for This me? isn't a hearing. Okay. This isn't a trial. Oh. Okay. You have the right to appeal if you don't agree with our decision. Um, and we may, and we may not. Right. You know those, you know, yeah, we know the process know for rules. that. Yeah. yeah. What, do you, what do you think the, um, if I may? Yes, please, go ahead. What do you think the purpose of, of uh, property taxes are? Um, 
Okay, I don't know what it has to do with us being a church, but I'll, I'll be happy to field um, the question. Property taxes are to pay a, uh, an organization which claims a monopoly on doing a given task um, to do that task. So if it's the maintenance of roads, it's an organization that claims the monopoly on those roads. If it's picking up leaves, it's an organization that picks up um, the claims the monopoly on leaves. If it's trash pickup, which for somehow, Keen manages to not have a monopoly on that, and still trash doesn't pile up everywhere, um, it's to pay for these services. Now, the services are forced upon you whether you need them or not. Um, specifically, our problem is with schools. Uh, we intend to and have always paid for all the other services. It's simply the schools that we uh, have issue with. So you just want to exempt from the school portion of the taxes? That would be, be glorious. You know, I mean, is that just elementary or just all public school? Um, K through 12. Okay. That's it. I, there's, I've said it many times, it's $15,000 to send a kid to school in the, uh, in, in New Hampshire. I think it's, that might be Cheshire County numbers. I'm not entirely sure. It's about 15 grand to send a kid to school here. Um, many private schools operate with numbers uh, significantly lower than that. If you look at the um, Seventh Day Adventist School in Westmoreland, uh, it's a great example. I don't know what their uh, numbers are now, but when I looked previously, some years ago, it was $1,500. They were operating at about a tenth of what, um, you know, that's ten times the efficiency as the public school system. Now, I'd like to point out, New Hampshire has some of the best schools in the country, but that's comparing public schools to public schools. If we want to jump up and make better schools, the best way to do that is to introduce competition in the marketplace. And the way we're not going to do that is by continuing to fund failure. So that sounds like a, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you guys have pursued changes in legislation. Well, I mean, you know, um, <laughs> the, the legislation is that uh, people can apply to be a church. If you consider that to be a political issue, I would uh, counter and say it's a moral issue. Politics has to do with politicians. It has to do with, um, you know, people running for office and those sorts of things. It represents people's morals, moral opinions. Their moral opinions come from, I believe, an internal light, a piece of God. So therefore, um, we're simply talking about what does God speaking through me have to say on this issue? And I would question whether God speaking through you says, you better obey or we'll take your house from you. Because that doesn't sound like any God anywhere I've ever heard of. I'm just trying to figure out the t if it's a tail that wags the dog type thing. Sure. I understand. It looks remarkably like a group of activists who uh, abhor the government, move to town, and now they're demanding dispensation from their property taxes. I know that that's what it looks like. I'm not entirely prepared to say that it doesn't have it to do with that. But what I did was I looked at myself and I asked myself a question. And is that, you know, is this a message to me? Is this what my life's calling is? Does it come from God as I understand him or her? It, well, yeah, it does. So therefore, I legally, re, you know, meet all of the, uh, the, the criteria from what I can tell. I get that, um, you know, it's a lot easier to just run things by demanding that we pay for the schools. All we want is to not do. We've asked for 70% 70, uh, 70 off on one side, 80% off on the other because of uh, where folks live and, and that sort of thing. And um, schools are about 60%. We will, if we got what we asked for, we would simply give the extra money because frankly, they do pick up our leaves. Yes, I would like to see leaf competition, but I'm not gonna compete in the area of leaf picking up. So I'm gonna pay the organization that picks up my leaves. Yes, I drive on the roads. I'm gonna pay the organization that keeps the roads going. I think there should be competition. I think people should be responsible for the road out to the middle. I think a lot of things, but that doesn't change the fact that I use these, and therefore I want to and I intend to pay for them. I've got an eight-year-old. He doesn't go to public school. He's never going to. And still, money comes from my household to pay other people's kids' education. You can't tell me that's not abhorrent, stealing from an eight-year-old to give to other eight-year-olds. 
I mean, senior citizens have the same issue, people without kids. Yeah, they've, um, at the very least, many of them, 85% of people send their kids to government school, right? So many of them, you could claim, are paying the tuition of their kids over time. Um, it, of course, I would rebut my own statement here in saying that well, the problem is the bad schools, the entrenched way that we do it. In other countries, we do other things. They have better schools. The United States school system is failing against other countries, and the reason is is because there's no competition in the marketplace. I thank you for the explanation. Thanks, Josh. Mary Berry, got anything? Good? All right, thanks. Thank you. May I slip in one more word about schools? Oh, oh uh, we're, that's up to you. I mean, we're not really here to debate schools, whether, okay. you know. Well, it's, I, there's it, nothing we can do about them, honestly. It's true. It's about the spiritual implications of the schools. If you look at how the schools teach the Great Depression, they teach that free markets don't work and that the Great Depression was a nat natural result of capitalism and that FDR saved us from the Great Depression. Well, the reality is, the Church of the Invisible Hand is aware that there is an invisible hand which guides markets to do that which is right. What caused the Great Depression was the creation of the Federal Reserve, government intervention in 1913. Fifteen years later, they caused the Great Depression. It's never happened before. It's never happened since. It's not an artifact. It's not a failure of the invisible hand. It's a failure of the visible boot of government. And you want to indoctrinate our children to believe that you're the heroes and we're the villains and you want us to pay for it. I think not. Okay, having heard from the applicants, um, the city does recommend denying the application. They still have failed to prove the burden. Uh, this is the third time we've heard from them. Um, so the board is willing, is, has the option to do what they want with this. Well, I see nothing different in the paperwork than we've seen in the past. And I have to kind of second that and I kind of go along with denying the request for abatement based on my. Okay, so Barry, you're making the motion to deny? Okay. Do the second. Second. Okay. Any additional comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Application is denied. Mike? Uh, only if need. <clears throat> if you guys have additional questions on it. Um, We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.